Once something of an icon to anime fans, Otaku no Video is a two-part OAV that provides a strange hybrid of mock documentary and comic drama loosely based on the history of anime production Uber company Gainax. Starting in 1982, the story is told through the eyes of Kubo, an unassuming young college student leading a pretty normal life, busying himself with his girlfriend and his tennis club. Yet, owing to a chance encounter with old school friend and anime nut Tanaka, he finds himself suddenly thrust into the heart of Japanese nerd culture. Kubo is dragged along to meetings of Tanaka's otaku friends, each of whom has a different interest and thus gives us viewers a brief insight into what makes different hobbyists tick. We get introduced to a wrestling fan, a cosplayer, a military nut and of course Miss Honda whose specialties are pretty boys and alcoholic beverages. Although reluctant at first, Kubo finds himself drawn into their community and driven to turn his newfound interest in anime into a way of life. The story is also backed up by curious little live-action inserts dotted about throughout the show. Made up of interviews with real-life otaku, these give us an increasingly bizarre look into their daily lives. In the second half, we pick up the story in 1985, following Kubo into the cutthroat corporate business world, but sadly leaving the social circle behind. Of all the characters from part one, only Tanaka really has much bearing on part two, as the narrative changes to focus on Kubo's admirably daft but rather less compelling model kit company, a firm that appears to be staffed entirely by faintly racist stereotypes of the Chinese. Taken as a whole, I have to say I found Otaku no Video rather disappointing. The first half is an enjoyable, airy look at the otaku lifestyle, packed with plenty of references and in-jokes. At times it's even quite poignant, as Kubo's new lifestyle suddenly separates him from his former friends. The second half, however, feels strained and uncomfortable by comparison. The many live-action scenes begin to grate, the narrative feels increasingly disjointed, and the tone shifts abruptly into childish fantasy. I couldn't help thinking they'd used all their good ideas in the first half, as without wishing to spoil the ending, the second feels as if they got a six-year-old to finish the story for them. You could interpret this as some savage commentary by Gainax on the mentality of their fans, but that certainly doesn't make it fun. This section does touch on the story of the two near-legendary amateur animations produced for the Daikon Sci-Fi convention, but sadly only the impressive nuke sequence from Daikon 4 is included here. Presumably to avoid copyright issues, ONV instead shows the characters creating a similar looking film, albeit one sadly lacking the zany battle between pop culture icons that made the original so memorable. Before the days of YouTube, this fake making of would probably have been quite intriguing, but now that you can easily watch the real Daikon films online, it all seems slightly pointless. As you'd expect from Gainax, the whole thing does look very nice, and their fans are sure to appreciate the production. Attractive, caricaturish character designs are provided by Kenichi Sonoda, and there's plenty of care and attention heaped on the subtle background details. Sadly, however, what really stands out here on the artistic side is that fleeting glimpse of Daikon 4, and I would urge anyone who hasn't already seen it to just go punch that into the search box now. I can wait. Ultimately, I think the problem is that the anime game has changed a great deal since Otaku no Video was produced. As a mock documentary, it doesn't really work. The allegedly factual elements are funny at first, but they soon become tiresome and also quite awkward when forced into the ailing storyline. As an anime about people who watch anime, it may have been quite a novelty at the time, but there have been a few such series since then that have covered this topic in far more depth. Watching ONV now, it's difficult to ignore the haunting spectre of communism, and by communism I mean Genshikan. While the newer series likely owes a great debt to Otaku no Video, everything that ONV does is a work of fiction, Genshiken does better and on a grander scale. 
I suppose we are only talking about two OAVs here. Comparisons with long-running series are probably a bit unfair. Nevertheless, I find it difficult to recommend Otaku no Video as anything more than a historical curiosity. Ardent convention goers, followers of the scene, and particularly fans of Gainax are sure to find something to their liking here. Anyone with little more than a casual interest in anime will likely find themselves at a loss, particularly as many of the cultural jokes and references revolve around series from more than 20 years ago. In closing, I would give Otaku no Video a Gainax weirdness rating of Shinji is Recycled Naria. Shinjiru mono wa tada hikaru jou